Ah, this is the second time I'm filming this video. Let's get it right this time, please. Hey, I'm Michelle with Michelle Loves Books. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do my December wrap up. Yes, the first time I filmed it was on December 31st. I was like in a big rush. It was a mess. Let's try this again. It's gonna be really late coming out, but hey, whatever. Who's keeping track anyways? So, in December, I did go ahead and participate in Cramathon very casually. I was gonna go all out and like vlog the experience, but that did not happen. <laughs> I need to start realizing this. That's never gonna happen. I did have some highlights though I will likely share at the end of this video because I did take some footage of some things that we were doing, but let's go ahead and get into December stats. I read nine books this month. I DNF'd one. Two of those books were audiobooks. Seven of those books were physical books. Five of those were library books. And four of those were books from my own shelves. The pages I read without audiobooks is 1,708 pages. With audiobooks is 2,503 pages. The first book I finished was Vox by Christina Dalcher. This takes place in a dystopian America where women have suddenly become oppressed. The government has taken away their voices, or particularly their words, by mandating that every woman wear a bracelet. So they wear this bracelet that counts their words per day and they are capped at a limit of 100 words. If they start to exceed those 100 words, the bracelet will emit little pulses and they will gain intensity with each extra word and they can cause severe pain. Women can no longer hold jobs and they are meant to stay at home and raise the kids and serve their husbands. Dr. Jean M McClellan is a scientist. She has a growing resentment towards her husband. Her son is joining a support group of sorts at school that's teaching him how women should be, why it's important, driving a wedge between their relationship. So these series of events happen that leads her to taking this position to help the government, to find a cure for this sickness. At first refuses because she doesn't want her discoveries, you know, backfire, but they have their ways of backing her up into a wall. She manages to see that there's a potential here. She buys her and her daughter three months, three months of life without their counters. So she takes on this job with the hopes that she can also make a breakthrough and find some freedom. I was really excited for this book, but it was a bit of a disappointment. Although it was really engaging and interesting, it was not without its issues. I felt that there were some things that were really not flushed out enough. It was very Handmaid's Tale and a little bit harsh on the man-hating feminist side for my taste. There actually were a couple instances where some of the male characters don't necessarily agree with what's going on, but everyone's just kind of powerless in the situation. But I think to counter my distaste, the feminist aspect of this is if they expanded on those male characters some more to kind of balance it out more. That was pretty much my only issue with it. This is probably a 2.5 to 3 star. This, that's where this book is sitting with me. The next two books I read was Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince. I'm not going to talk about those books very much. It's the first two books in the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare and I am doing an extensive book talk on these in a vlog. However, those do have spoilers. This trilogy is a prequel to the Mortal Instruments series. It's a historical fantasy with like angels, demons, shadow hunters who fight demons, Nephilim. It's really fantastic, but like I said, I'm not gonna really go into it much because I just did my wrap up on Clockwork Princess. I'm like really tired of talking about it for right now. <laughs> so it takes place in the 1800s England with these like mechanical creatures. So the next one is Jane by April Linder. Lindner, sorry. This is a modern retelling of Jane Eyre and I don't know what came over me. I think I just needed it. I was really craving like a romance. That's the only excuse I have because this book was not good, but I ate that shit up. I don't know. I read this book in like one sitting. I stayed up all night. I think I was also really loving the Jane Eyre story and it's practically the exact same story, but they just like expand on it and then they change. Mr. Rochester is Nico Rothschild. I don't know. He's a rock star. Nico has a daughter and he's this like world famous rock star with two ex-wives. And then it starts to kind of break away from the original plot when Jane runs off after their failed non-marriage. Jane is too humiliated and has too much pride to go back to him and say 
like, hey, I have no money. I have no place to go. She goes off to the city, goes into hiding. She's crying in her cup of coffee and she meets this waitress who gives her a couch for the night. And this waitress has two roommates. They help her get a job. She rents out like a room out of their place. I really liked how they expanded her story. They've given Jane options. Let's move on. The next book I read was Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. I meant to read this last year during Cramathon. So I'm glad I actually got to it this year. I actually didn't know that it was a collection of short stories. And if I would have known that, I probably would have gotten to it sooner. I wasn't even really excited about reading it, but it fit a prompt for Cramathon. It's three short stories that follow different casts of characters who are connected by a train wreck. This was really cute and clever. So a train crashes or like gets stuck in a snowstorm on Christmas Eve. Some of the passengers get off of the train and go across like a highway to a Waffle House. And this sets in motion a series of encounters and strange events. So a girl realizes the truth about her relationship and finds true love. A pair of friends admit their love for each other. A girl loses the love of her life, but finds her Christmas miracle. Each story has these crazy sets of events and these characters somehow share a connection that weave these stories together. There's just a YA, like sweet, fluffy romances, fun and humorous, and I really enjoyed this book. It's just, it's really cute. The next book I read was Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Quickly, this follows Alex Stern, who's a high school dropout, but she gets recruited at Yale because of her ability to see greys, and greys are like ghosts. So they want her to work with Darlington to scope out these secret clubs and societies that operate out of Yale. So she needs to blend in, which is difficult with a dorm mate. These societies deal in magic and necromancy, at least one of them deals with necromancy. Alex's job is to make sure that they are working within like a moral scope. Make sure that they're not breaking any laws or rules, I think. She's supposed to report back to the Dean. A body winds up dead. Darlington, her mentor, goes missing. She is on her own trying to solve this mystery. So I had a really hard time. I almost wasn't gonna talk about this book until I gave it one more go, but I decided that there wasn't really a point. I don't think that it will make that much of a difference. The premise of this book is so awesome. The story behind it where Leigh Bardugo got her inspiration for this book because she went to Yale and she says that these societies are real. Like they're not all like shady and stuff, but she put a darker spin on it for the sake of her book. Like they're so cool that there's like some truth behind it. I just feel really disappointed in this book. I had to listen to some parts a couple of times to like make sure I got it correctly and make sure I didn't miss anything because there were definitely some times where I was like, wait, hold on wait what just happened and I still feel like I'm missing something I really couldn't connect to the characters although I do like Alex and I like her attitude she has some pretty funny moments I do like her give no fucks attitude as she kind of starts developing a friendship with her dorm mate she's almost like typical I guess I like how she handles a situation that happened to her friend but for the most part I didn't care about any of the characters I thought that Darlington had a lot of potential because he's this very glasses half full kind of character and against Alex's half empty cup, I thought that there would be some really cool dynamic between them. And it's like a dual perspective. I'm expecting their stories to like merge. At the beginning of the book, Alex is like, oh, Darlington, Darlington, like where, like there's something that happened in their relationship. I'm like waiting for it and waiting for it. And then all of a sudden Darlington's gone. And like, I didn't see any progression in their relationship. And so I'm like, where did this come from? It just all feels super disconnected. I also felt the same way about the secret societies. I really felt like that was a big selling point for the book to make this stand out. And I just couldn't even get a handle on how many societies there were, their purpose. It made it kind of sound like there's a lot of different societies that Alex is working on, but I never could get a handle on what Alex was particularly working on. I just, I was just really confused. So this confusion left me just really frustrated more than anything. I've always kind of liked the past and present timelines. I really like dual perspectives as well because I really like to get in each character's head. This is the one instance I didn't like it. I found that it really made things really confusing. This is an adult book, it does have trigger warning for rape. Can I just point out the fact that there is 
one instance that is really weird. I mean, I don't want to knock it on having like weirdness, but like it's disturbing enough. And then to add that kind of weirdness, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm really curious to know what other people thought of that. I don't even know what to do with that. So anyways, we're gonna move on to the next book, Pumpkin Heads. It is a graphic novel by Rainbow Rowell. This follows Josiah and Deja, who work at a pumpkin patch. Over the years of them working each season together, they've really developed a nice friendship. But this is their last night to work together. They are going off to college and they won't be able to work at the pumpkin patch anymore. So Josiah, all these years, Josiah has had a crush on one of the girls that works there, but he has never met her before. He's never talked to her. So Deja convinces him that tonight is the night you are gonna go talk to that girl, buddy. So she helps him track her down and finally talk to her. But it takes you through the entire pumpkin patch. So it was just really fun. I love this story. The next one I read was Heartstopper, volume one. And this is just another really sweet, heartwarming graphic novel, which follows Charlie, who is openly gay, and his friendship with Nick who is a rugby player. Since Charlie has come out as gay, people have been saying some things about him and haven't like wanted to get close to him. Um, he's also been kind of fooling around with this other guy who has a girlfriend, but he's not ready to come out as gay, but he's really abusive. Nick steps in and kind of rescues him. They get close. I just loved this story. The third one will be published in the next couple months, I believe. And then the next one I read is As Old As Time by Liz Braswell. This one, I was just so glad that I finally finished it. It has been sitting on my shelf half read since July. This is part of a series called Twisted Tales, and they basically reimagine different Disney stories. This one is obviously a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. It has dual timelines and dual perspectives, on Belle's perspective follows pretty much the entire Disney movie and then on the other perspective is told from the past when her parents meet. I really like that perspective. We get to see a lot of magic and magical creatures and those entirely different like whimsical world. They also did something kind of funny when Belle goes to the castle to like set her father free and agrees to stay there. Like it felt really rushed. They kind of just like did something different with it. I kind of didn't like it so much. So I guess I ended up giving this about three stars. It was decent, but likely it's not gonna stick with me. I'm really undecided if I want to pick up any of the other stories in the Twisted Tales. So as I said in December, I participated in Cramathon, but I want to go ahead and go over the challenges that I read for. I did complete all of the challenges. Yay! The first challenge was a book with a blue frosty cover. I used Let It Snow for that one. The second challenge was the shortest book on your TBR, and I used Heartstopper for that one. Challenge number three was a book under 200 pages. We're gonna go with the book that I DNF'd, I actually forgot to mention that one, Girl Made of Stars. And if you want to hear why I DNF'd that book, you can watch my worst books of 2019. <laughs> I'll leave it linked below. I only read like 130 pages of it, so we're gonna go with that one. The fourth challenge was where the author's name starts with the same letter as yours. So I chose As Old As Time by Liz Braswell B. Borden. Fifth challenge was a book with illustrations. That one is Pumpkin Heads, although I had a lot of options here for that one. Question number six was a book published this year. Ninth House works perfectly for that one. And seventh challenge was to read seven books, and I got that covered. Technically, I read nine books over the course of the month, but I think six of them during Cramathon. All right, first of all, I'm sorry it's super noisy. I've tried to talk to them about keeping their volume down, but they just can't control themselves. They're super excited, it's winter break. But I wanted to go ahead and do this. I was contemplating on doing an entire tutorial video. This isn't a cooking channel, so I generally suck at cooking. But I was really excited. I learned how to make pumpkin pasties. It's super, super easy. My mother-in-law actually just got us an air fryer. I'm super excited. I've been using it a ton. First thing I wanted to make was pumpkin pasties. Pumpkin pie is like my favorite. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lazy, sorry. I'll tell you what you're 
supposed to do and then you can go look up the recipe and and do it you don't need to watch me so basically it's pumpkin pie I bought pumpkin pie spice because I just thought it was easier so I already have my pre-made pumpkin here I had made it the other night I buy I do not make my own pie crust because like why this pie crust is super good I'll show you the assembly process so I will try to find the recipe that I used and link it below here we go 